Welcome back to the Done Deal Show. So much to talk about today. Updates from Fabrizio Romano, David Ornstein. Done deals completed. The new dawn at Manchester United. An Arsenal football club looking at one of the best young prospects in European and world football. You know you've got to stay with the terrace. You know you've got to hit the like button. You know you've got to make sure you are subscribing as well. But we're going to start with the done deal. The first done deal of this show, which is Chelsea have reached an agreement with Leicester to sign Kieran Dewsbury Hall. The fee is for £30 million, uh, in line with the other offers for the 25-year-old Leicester midfielder. Set to complete his medical today and sign a contract until 2030. Seen as a perfect fit for the style that Chelsea want to play. And look, there's been a number of Chelsea fans upset about this deal. There's been some that are quite excited. There's been the conspiracy theory that this is all just about PSR. Is he really good enough? Is he really above the level of Conor Gallagher? He is. Maybe not when you look at the GA element, but when it comes to control on the ball, technical ability, first touch, passing range, decision-making in the middle, Dewsbury Hall is better. And at 30 million, by the way, you might get more than 30 million for selling Gallagher. I believe you're upgrading for less money. I think this is an excellent piece of business. Great age profile, understanding. He knows the new coach. And it isn't about knowing the new coach. People, again, are going to oh, tell you about I thought it was about the club picking players. The coach can help pick players if the coach matches the style of football and the philosophy the club wants to play because they're, they're one unis they're in unison. They're one organism moving forward. Where it doesn't work is if the club has a philosophy and the manager has a separate philosophy and they're both picking players and adding two or three each to the system, you create a Frankenstein squad. So I think this is really, really good business for Chelsea. I do. And I'm, as a rival, I don't want it to work. But if I'm being objective about this, this could be an excellent piece of business for Chelsea. Let us know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. Before we go any further, please make sure you download One Football. It is the best football app in the world. And if you haven't got it already, you're mad. If you have and haven't used it for a while, get back on it. Amazing content this summer and beyond. Scan the QR code or click on the link below. Now, another done deal today that has been revealed by Mr. Ornstein is that United have agreed a deal with Newcastle to appoint Dan Ashworth as the sporting director. The move was delayed over compensation, as we know. But the deal has now been sanctioned and he will start work immediately. Now, some will say, Terry, what is your fo why, why, why do you have so much focus on sporting directors? Why do you have so much focus on the way the club is structured and who is making the key footballing decisions daily? And I said it before and I'll say it again. I have a fervent belief that these roles that the likes of Dan Ashworth do are every bit as important as your head coach. Every bit as important as the star players you've got. And in some respects, you could argue more important because they are the heartbeat. They are the foundation of your club. Man United haven't had a sporting director in title. We've had nobody doing that job since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Sir Alex Ferguson was the head coach and the sporting director all rolled into one. He was a general manager. Barada, Dan Ashworth, Wilcott, we've got our own coaches coming in. I do believe the club is building an excellent structure, an excellent foundation that I hope improves the culture at the club, gives us one like I just said about Chelsea, sort of system where we're working in unison and all moving in the right direction. This is a phenomenal piece of business for Manchester United. On paper, of course, we have to wait and see how the fruit tastes off the labour that we are putting in. But my initial gut feeling is very, very positive indeed. So I'm very happy that Dan Ashworth is at Manchester United I know the transfer window is officially open, but it's the 1st of July. This is when a lot of people feel the transfer window really begins as all the clubs move into their new financial year. PSR is a different conversation now. And everybody, even the sale of players, clubs that weren't up against any problems with PSR are probably waiting until now so that all the sales they make go into this year's trading as opposed to last year's as an example. So, very, very happy indeed with this as Man United look to push forward. And this comes at the same time as Man United accelerating their talks for Ugarte. Now, Man United want him. The Red Devils have been interested in him before. And there are many reports, including from 
Ugarte's homeland of Uruguay that positive talks are ongoing between Man United and PSG. Ugarte wants to join. Ugarte wants to be a Manchester United player and it is predicted and it could even happen while I'm live recording this that the first official bid is expected very, very soon from Manchester United for Ugarte. And again, I've said it before, I like this signing. I understand there are question marks over it. I can be objective there, but I think this would be a very, very good piece of early business coupled with the links to the lit. And I know that some of these players are not every Man United fan's cup of tea. I know some people think, oh, they sound like, they sound like the manager still in control is in Ten Hag. I'm putting faith. And some of you will say it's copium. Some of you will say it's hopium. And maybe there is an element of that. But the proof will be in the pudding. I believe these are the signings that the Baradas and the Wilcots and the Dan... I know Dan Ashworth only started today. But let's have it right. He's been doing work prior. We know this, right? In reality. I think these are the signings they believe Man United need to help. They've kept, they've kept the head coach as Ten Hag. That, and they've brought in new assistants for him. That tells me they want a particular style of play, which they know Ten Hag can coach. They are trying to buy the players for him that he needs to make that happen as we look to move forward as a club. And am I guaranteeing that this works out and these signings are brilliant and it all we get back to the top in the next two to three years? I can't guarantee it. But I have far more faith in that now than at any other managerial appointment or signing we've made in the last decade. Why? because we're changing the structure and we're going about things in a different way. So this is very, very positive news as far as I'm concerned. But of course, I want to gauge your views and I want to gauge your opinions as well. Now, we've seen a number of links in the last few days of Ricardo Calafiori to Arsenal. Now, one really interesting thing, the price has been set. Reports have suggested that it would cost £40 million to bring this young man in. That's also been coupled with Fabrizio Romano stating... On his Here We Go podcast, keep an eye on Arsenal and Chelsea for Ricardo Calafiori. It's still an open race. And what's really interesting about him saying this, look, and I'm not discounting Chelsea from the race. Of course they're in it. Of course they can get it done. But Arsenal have far more links out there as far as I've seen to the player, although Chelsea were linked to him first. But if there was no chance of this happening, I think Fabrizio would shut it down. I think Fabrizio would say, look, I spoke to the player, I spoke to Bologna, I spoke to Arsenal, and there's just almost no chance of this happening or taking place. But that doesn't appear in any capacity to be the situation. And I think that is quite telling. I think that is quite interesting. That although the rumours originated in Italy and a lot of the UK fans of the Premier League says, nah, nonsense, it isn't from a tier one. The tier ones are not shutting it down as of right now. There is a chance and the possibility that this deal happens. And at £40 million, if it was to come to fruition, this would be phenomenal. Phenomenal. Absolutely no doubt about it in my mind. This would be a phenomenal piece of business if it was to come true. For either Arsenal or Chelsea, I think this young man is a star in the making. An absolute star in the making. Now, he has to keep his head down, he has to work hard, he needs to keep pushing to improve. But overall, I, I, I think he is a phenomenal, phenomenal player. But look, I'd love to get your views and I would love to get your opinions on this. Now, sticking with Fabrizio Romano and North London, I clicked on the wrong one. Uh, Fabrizio understands that Tottenham are advancing on Archie Gray. Negotiations progressing. Spurs are optimistic on personal terms after positive talks with the players' camp. Player open to the move. Tottenham hope to reach a total agreement and book a medical soon. Now, let me just say this now. I've only watched him play on a handful of occasions, Archie Gray, and each time I've been absolutely blown away by his quality. You speak to any Leeds United fan, and they are gutted at the possibility of him leaving, but they do also understand the quality that he possesses. You read any scouting report, forget the one since... Look at the dates. Don't go to the ones that are dated since all these links to the Premier League clubs. But go back six months. Go back 12 months. This kid has got stardust in his feet. If Spurs pull this off and develop him correctly, keep him on the straight and narrow, keep him working hard, this could be an absolutely, astonishingly good signing for Tottenham. 
absolutely astonishingly good. Archie Gray is high grade talent. And Brentford pretty much agreed a deal. It looks like it was going to complete. It's now been hijacked. There are links to, you know, Chelsea still being interested in other clubs. I'm a little bit jealous about this one. I really rate him. I really think he's talented. Of course, he needs the right nurturing. He needs the right development. And I think he can get that at Spurs. A big club, but not quite the pressure that a Chelsea or a Man United or an Arsenal would put upon you when signing. But still that real test, still that real, a, a much bigger expectation than a Brentford, for instance. So I think it's a brave move from him to put himself into that situation. But then why would he not? No disrespect to Brentford. Like Spurs are an exponentially bigger football club. But as ever, people, look, I want to get all your views. I want to get your opinions on. Listen, some of these confirmed pieces of news today, Dan Ashworth, Dewsbury Hall, some of the rumours that are going around the Calafuris, the talks that are happening with Ugarte and the Litz. And by the way, a few Dutch uh, outlets I've spoken to, just sort of DMing people, having conversations, they believe that the Lit deal is very, very close to a full agreement. So we'll keep our eyes out for that. But until next time, my people... Take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.